Hello beautiful plant people. Welcome back to Rooting Mindfully. My name is Iana and today, and today we're going to do five more of my easy to meet uncommon house plants. So let's get started. All right, so my first easy to meet uncommon house plant is the Anthem Forgetii. I got this plant from Equigenera and I will link the video up, up in the cards. So that way you can see it. As you can see, this plant has a new leaf coming in and it's still developing. That's why it's not as dark as this one here or this one here. This was the last leaf that it put out. But as you can see, this new leaf is still developing. Like I said, um, we did have a little bit of change in humidity as you can see here, but this plant is still coming in very nicely. This plant does take a little bit of underwatering, which is why I picked this as an easy, uncommon house plant. Uh, you will see a little bit of speckling if you don't, you know, keep up on the watering, but it will handle underwatering. If you miss a, a watering or two, or if you're not watering on time, it'll just curl a little bit on the edges. But as soon as you water it, it'll bounce back. I did just water it this morning, so you know, in a day or two, it will bounce back and it'll grow in like these here. But this is why I picked this plant as well as like the Clarinervium, if you saw the last video, it is more pest resistant than some of the other plants in my collection. And it is always putting out a new leaf, which I enjoy very much. These plants also let you know if they're happy uh, when they put out nice sized leaves as well as they will put out blooms. So if you get a bloom, I don't cut mine off because, you know, they don't interfere with the growth, but that just lets me know that the plant is happy. And I love it when my plants let me know when they're happy. So that is why I picked this as number one, my Anthium Forgetii. The number two uncommon houseplant that I'm choosing here is the Syngonium Auritum. I hope that you guys can get a good look at this one here. This plant develops very nice mature lobes as you can see here. They do have a couple of, of the juvenile one. This is a newer leaf that is developing. I like this plant because it is always putting out leaf. This one grows pretty fast as most syngoniums do grow fast. Uh, the only thing that I don't nor necessarily like about this plant is that it is very top heavy so you see it needs something to balance on but I will go ahead and stake this one up. But this is a very interesting syngonium. I love how wide and broad the leaves are compared to other syngoniums in my collection. It just gives your collection more fullness than some of you know the dainty ones. This one can handle more pests than the other syngoniums. I feel like the other ones, um, because they're so thin leaf and dainty, if they were to get hit by thrips, they wouldn't necessarily make it. This one did have a thrip problem, but as you can see, it still looks pretty nicely. It did bounce back from the thrip infestation and it only suffered a little bit of damage as you can see on this leaf here. But this is why I like this one as an uncommon house plant. Another uncommon house plant that I like is the Florida Ghost. Now mine is a very bright Florida Ghost. It's continuing to put out white leaves. I did get this pl plant from Root House Green and I'll link the video up above. But these are the leaves that it came with and I believe it came with this one white leaf. But since it's put out two more white leaves and the one that came prior has not turned green yet. So I'm not sure if this one will turn green. But as you can see these lights, these, these leaves are purely white and they're so white that it's kind of hard to get it on camera. But I do have this under my Sansy light, and I think that's another reason why the, the white, the leaves are staying so white. Um, but this is just a gorgeous plant. I love this orange stem that is developing. And I didn't know that the Florida Ghost actually had this orange stem. And I don't know if this is again coming from my Sansy light because it's just so bright. But this is just a beautiful plant. I'm just waiting to see if the leaves are going to, you know, turn green. But 
I just love this plant so much. This one does take a little bit more watering than some of my other plants, so I do have to keep an eye on it. But it is always putting out a leaf. As you can see, the, the new one that is growing there is definitely coming out white. But this is just an amazing plant to have. It is so low maintenance. I haven't had a pest issue with this one. And like I said, it's just always putting out another leaf. So this is why I love the Florida Ghost, as well as it does add some interest to my collection. Another shade, you know, because most of my plants are green, so the white does tend to pop. But this is a nice plant to add to your collection if you ever get one. The next plant in my collection is actually a fern. So this is a uncommon fern. I don't see a lot of people owning this fern, but if you saw my mom's haul, you would know that we both own this fern, but this is an Australian tree fern. It is a beautiful and gorgeous fern. I actually got this at a local nursery and it only cost me $6.99, which was insane because they do go for a little bit more online. Um, it was a little bit overwatered at the nursery, but you can see most of the leaf, most of these fronds are coming in a lot better. And something to know is that these little new growths that come in are actually called fiddleheads, but they are just so cute. You can see that it's developing one here. That's another fiddlehead. And it's just the middle here is full of fiddleheads. But if you can see how furry it is, it's just an interesting texture. I've never seen a fern like this at all. And the middle is actually, this stem here, this trunk is actually full of roots. So instead of like most ferns having their roots at the bottom, the middle is actually full of roots. So you can actually water the plant through the middle and it'll go down towards the bottom of the pot. So this is an interesting fern to have. These can get really big, especially if you grow them outside. They can get as tall as some people's houses, but I don't think it'll get that big in my home. But this is just a lovely fern. I love the furriness of it. As you, as you know, my plant collection, I do have a couple furry plants, but this is just one that I had to add to my collection when I saw it at the terrain. And just to note, if you have an issue with dermatitis or anything, you might want to be careful with that plant because some people are known to have contact dermatitis. And the last plant I have is my Syngonium albo. This plant is just amazing. Now, it did have a thrip issue, and normally I don't pick pet plants that have um, pest issues to be, you know, an easy plant, but this plant, guys, I almost lost this plant entirely. When I moved from my mom's house to this apartment here, I had left most of my plants, you know, at her house. And I think it had gotten attacked by spider mites and I was only able to save about four stems of this plant. And I think I brought it here back in January or February. And now look how big it's gotten. So this is why I'm adding this plant to the list because it is a survivor. I just cannot believe how this plant was able to turn around from four stems to what it is now. Uh, and then if you see here, the less light you give this plant, the more like a yellowy chartreuse color you'll get for the leaves. If you can see that. And then the more light you give this plant, the whiter and brighter your leaves will come out. So with these variegated plants, as with the Florida Ghost, you do need to give these plants more light so that way they can maintain these bright white leaves. And when you give these plants more light, the, leaf, the white will be able to stay on there longer. You won't have as much browning on the leaves. Um, because the you know the white parts of the leaves don't have any chlorophyll so they do need extra light to be able to maintain the brightness but if you can see there was a point in time where I didn't have it you know in front of the window or near window and it still has produced nice leaves they're just not as white as these other ones here but as you can see this plant is doing really well and even with the thrip damage, you can see that some of the leaves, I left them on there just so you guys can see them. 
uh, with the thrip damage, the plant is still doing pretty well. So it is doing wonderfully. I do get a couple just all white leaves. If you can see this new growth coming in here. Another reason why I like this plant is because it's a fast grower. It's always putting out about five or so leaves at a time, which is why it's so full and lush. This is just one plant in here. Um, and then it's so easy to propagate and just to put it back in the pot. So this is why I, I have this as one of my favorite or one of the easy uncommon plants because it's a fast grower. It can bounce back from almost anything and it is just such a beautiful plant overall. All right guys, so you saw five more of my easy to me uncommon house plants. If you guys wanna leave down any comments below, if you guys have any these plants, or you're looking to get some of these plants, or you have other plants that you find to be easy, let me know in the comment section below. As always, I just wanna thank you guys for liking my videos and subscribing. Please subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and hit the notification bell, so that way you know the next time I'm gonna upload a new video. And we will pin a comment in this comment section below, but me and Sage will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.